Last month, Hack the Box, which is a cybersecurity upskilling platform famous for their practical ethical hacking labs and hands-on training, released a practical hands-on cybersecurity training focused on the defensive side of cybersecurity. Hack the Box Certified Defensive Security Analyst consists of 15 modules in the SOC Analyst job role path. It has 165 sections and covers eight knowledge domains. This is a game changer for anyone who's trying to land their first cybersecurity job because the the first problem that will face you as you're trying to land your first cybersecurity job is the lack of experience because organizations want you to already have an experience but you can't get experience without having a job and you can't have a job without having experience. It's the good old catch 22. So I reached out to Hack the Box and asked them if they are happy for me to review this course. Not only did they give me access to this course but they even decided to sponsor this video. So I spent the last few weeks going through this training and going through the labs and exercises and all I could think of is I wish I had access to this stuff when I was trying to land my first cybersecurity job because this is what I was looking for and these are precisely the skills that I look for when I hire cybersecurity analysts. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is exactly, I don't mean to sound like Cat Williams, but this is exactly what I've been waiting for. So this is the video breakdown and I'll show you exactly what I've been up to. Let's get into it. So this training course and certification is an intermediate level course, meaning it has some prerequisites for you that you need to know before you do this training. But the good news is Hack the Box cover all of these prerequisites really nicely with some practical hands-on training, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of practical hands-on training that mimics real world environments. So here are the prerequisites that you need to know. You need to know how to interpret a letter of engagement and you need to have intermediate knowledge around web and infrastructure penetration testing concepts. Now this one might scare some of you but it says knowledge of web and infrastructure penetration testing. This doesn't mean that you need to be an intermediate level penetration tester. It just means that you need to know some of the foundational concepts around penetration testing which we'll go through together when I show you how to meet these prerequisites using Hack the Box training. You also need knowledge around web application, operating system, networking basics, and you need to know how to conduct manual and automated security analysis, incident handling activities, and you need to know how to communicate and write reports professionally. What I really liked about this course is that it shows you how to deal with cybersecurity incidents exactly the way we deal with them in a real world scenario where you need to do the analysis but you also need to do some reporting. Now to do this training you need to complete what Hack the Box refers to as job related tasks which is basically the training modules that you need to complete and be comfortable with before you can pass the certification. And all of these modules are practical hands-on modules. But before we do them, we need to make sure that we met all of the prerequisites. The prerequisites will make more sense as I talk with you through the pricing because this is where we will choose the exact tiering that will allow us to do the certification, but it will also allow us to do the prerequisites in the cheapest and fastest way possible. So the first way you can access this training is by getting the silver annual subscription subscription. This is the one that I recommend that you take because you get access to all of the training modules within this certification. You also get an exam voucher that contains two attempts. So even if you fail, you will have another attempt after receiving the examiner's feedback, which is pretty cool. But you also get access to Hack the Box training in tier 0, tier 1, and tier 2, which covers a lot of stuff. It covers all of the prerequisites that you need, but it also covers so many things around penetration testing and malware analysis, and it it's a lot cheaper to meet the prerequisites this way. And if you're a student, there is a generous discount for students. But if you feel like you're confident and you've met all of these prerequisites, perhaps you already work as a cyber analyst or you've done various cyber analyst training, then you can just pay for this training course and select the SOC analyst path only. And this will give you access to everything you need to pass this certification and just that. So you won't get access to other modules. You won't get access to do the prerequisites. So this one I only recommend for experienced individuals or for individuals who've done a lot of cybersecurity analyst training, especially if that training was practical hands-on. If all you've done is multiple choice based stuff, then I strongly, strongly recommend that you get the silver annual subscription because you will need to go through these labs to get more comfortable and confident so you can do this training and finish this certification. And now let me show you the rest of the modules, starting with the prerequisites that we need to do before this certification. To find the prerequisites path, go to academy.hackthebox.com from there, click on Paths, and if you scroll down, you'll find the path called SOC Analyst Prerequisites. So these are 10 modules that you need to do before you do the CDSA certification. And to be completely honest with you, I think any cybersecurity professional should be familiar with these topics. In 
fact, I've recommended some of these modules in a few of my previous videos as a general foundation for cybersecurity professionals. Just before we get into the training, if you get the Silva annual subscription, you actually get access to a lot more courses than just what you need to finish the certification. Hack the Box classify their courses into tiering systems, so they have tier 0, tier 1, tier 2, and tier 4, where the difficulty increases as you go up in the tier levels. With the Silver annual subscription, you get access to everything in tier 0, tier 1, and tier 2. And there are some pretty cool courses related to ethical hacking and social engineering, and some stuff that I'm personally interested in that are not related to the certification that I may or may not do during my Christmas holidays this year. Now, as far as the content of this certification, like I said, my favorite part of this is that it really, really mimics a real world environment. This is precisely what we do in a security operation center, and even broadly as a cybersecurity team, this course really mirrors the actual real world scenarios of how we detect incidents and how we handle incidents. So the first module takes you through the incident handling process. So this is the universal process that we follow to handle cybersecurity incident. There is a methodology, we don't just go randomly and deal with them. So again, this prepares you for a professional environment. The second module covers SEAMS. So SEAM is the centralized log system that we use in security operation centers where we get logs from various systems and then we use this system to detect cybersecurity incidents. So this course features two of the most popular SEAMS in the industry. So it features Splunk, which is a commercial tool, but it also features ELK or ELK, it depends how you want to pronounce it. This is an open source version, so it's good to get exposure to both. But my favorite part of this is that it takes you through the MITRA attack framework, which has become the de facto standard in the industry. Almost every mature cybersecurity operation center uses the MITRA attack framework. So you will get introduced to it, but you'll also get to apply everything you've learned in a hands-on lab, which will give you that extra layer of understanding and practice. The next one goes a little bit deep into Windows event logs and finding evil. As a cyber analyst, we need to be extremely proficient with handling Windows logs because understanding the logs and analyzing the logs is how we actually can detect unusual activity. This is how we detect things like malware and ransomware and hackers and malicious actors. So this course goes really deep into this area, which is extremely important for cyber analysts. The next one introduces you to threat hunting and it features threat hunting with Elastic. So this is where you will get introduced to cybersecurity threat intelligence and threat hunting. Those are topics that are not typically entry-level topics. Those are more on the intermediate level. But what you get to do here is you get introduced to it. So you're not expected to be an expert in threat hunting and threat intelligence, but this course will give you an extremely good introduction to these areas, which you can later expand on. The next module is called Understanding Log Sources and Investigating with Splunk. This is where things will come in together. So your knowledge of scenes, your knowledge of Windows logs and various log sources. This is where you will use all of that to conduct investigations as a cybersecurity analyst. And I've said this before, but Splunk is an extremely popular platform. There is so much demands and need for Splunk. If you can get good in Splunk, you will be sought after. It's not easy for organizations to find individuals who have Splunk skills. So if Splunk is what you're interested in, trust me, you will have no problem landing a really good job. The next module is Windows Attacks and Defense. This is, in my opinion, a fairly advanced module that will challenge you a little bit. And I know a lot of cyber analysts who work in the industry who don't have this kind of knowledge. So the fact that you're getting introduced to these things and getting to not only learn about them, but practice them in a hands-on lab is extremely important. This module in particular focuses on Active Directory. So it's really important that you do the introduction to Active Directory training. Hack the Box as a company have a lot of experience in the ethical hacking world. And I can see they brought in this expertise into the cyber defense area, which is really cool because a lot of cyber defense and security analysts training will talk a little bit about attacks but I can see here they elaborated on that and they heavily featured how to protect Active Directory against attacks which is really cool and really important. I work in cyber security consulting and I help organizations and some of the problems they run into is that ethical hackers come into the organizations and they find all of these problems with Active Directory but then the organization is left with little guidance on how to actually secure Active Directory. So in this module you will learn that and you will also learn it from a defensive point of view which will give you a lot of valid context. The next two modules are about network traffic analysis, both beginner and intermediate. These modules are really great because they will sharpen your networking knowledge. This is not the same thing as passing a multiple choice exam about networking concepts that you memorize. No, here you will get to analyze in real time what these network protocols look like. This is an activity that we used to do 20 years ago and we still do it to this day where we take packet captures from the firewall and we analyze the network traffic. It will look like gibberish to you if you're not familiar 
familiar with network protocols but also being familiar with network protocols is not enough you actually need to practice how to analyze these network protocols these two modules i've recommended before in previous videos as part of your training as an aspiring cyber analyst so here you get to do another deep dive into this area which will make you a more knowledgeable cyber analyst the next module is about working with ids and ips ids is intrusion detection system and ips is intrusion prevention system in the real world and in the industry you may not hear the word ips and ids you might hear something like next gen firewall or next generation firewall so it is a firewall but now it comes pre-installed with an ids and an ips so this is something for people who work in network security but as a cyber analyst you will need to block things on the ips level you need to tweak some of those ids detection so this is an intermediate module that will challenge you a little bit more but again it will strengthen your knowledge in cyber attacks but also in networking protocols and the next module will introduce you to malware analysis in my opinion malware analysis is again a fairly advanced topic but all you're gonna do here is an introduction to malware analysis now in security operation centers not all cyber analysts know how to analyze malware some do some don't and some people specialize in the area of malware analysis so it's an ocean it's a world of its own but here you get to do some of it which is really cool so if this is an area that you get interested in you can further pursue more training into this particular area the next module is about javascript the obfuscation again this really showcases hack the box expertise when it comes to ethical hacking so this is another popular topic that penetration testers are familiar with but here you get introduced to it from a defensive point of view which is pretty cool and then you'll get introduced to yara and sigma for SOC analysts and even introduction to digital forensics again these two modules show you how to analyze threats on a hard drive and gets you to think about things from a digital forensic point of view i get asked a lot how to get into digital forensic and to be honest the answer is a little bit complicated because digital forensic is a specialization on its own but a lot of cyber analysts end up performing digital forensic activities as part of a security operation center so it can be its own independent specialization but it can also be a skill a task that you perform as a cyber analyst now how much digital forensic should you know as a cyber analyst it's a little bit debatable and it really depends on the size and maturity of the organization but these two modules will give you a lot of tools and knowledge on how to conduct basic forensic analysis within a security operation center this knowledge in these two modules is a lot more than what a lot of current cyber analysts in the industry know and can do so trust me you will be more than equipped to work as a cyber analyst after doing this course now the next one is about detecting windows attacks with splunk this is another deep dive into attacks on windows but with a focus on detecting those attacks analyzing those attacks on splunk and it will even introduce you to tools like zeek and you can also use the skills that you gained in analyzing network traffic and analyzing data because you will get to analyze some packet captures in the labs as i was going through some of these labs in the last few weeks i just realized how much i miss doing this type of work so if you're planning to do this training i am jealous of you because it's a lot of fun especially for someone like me who's passionate about this stuff and the final one is security incident reporting again this is an underrated skill i know a lot of fairly senior cyber analysts who unfortunately can't write a report to save their life so please take this module seriously it is important as cyber security professional we need to know how to communicate and how to write good reports that can be understood by technical and non-technical individuals now i know some of you will ask me in the comments so what about hr filters some dude on reddit said that the way cyber security works is there is hr people who run filters so we have to look through keywords and they only recognize certain certifications so this is a new certification therefore it's not recognized now i've answered this so many times in my videos but in job descriptions when we list certifications more often than not it is a wish list but not only that so many companies are fairly lazy so they just copy paste the older job posting and they put the same traditional certifications as a job requirement this is slowly changing but just for the sake of those of you who are still new to the industry in the last two years alone we've seen an influx of new training providers and a lot of new training has come into play which is really really exciting because these are opportunities for you to learn and build real world skills so as hiring managers even if we haven't heard of these new certifications, trust me we're not idiots we actually know these skills so once you do this certification from hack the box in your cv i want you to list the name of the certification but when you list this certification i want you to write a paragraph describing the tools that you've used and your expertise in certain areas but not only that you can have a section called projects and under this section you can say that you've done a project where you analyzed attacks on windows servers using splunk which is a module in hack the box so this is a project that you've done and it is a skill that we as hiring managers know and understand now i interview 
interview so many people every year for cybersecurity jobs and the biggest problem that I see time and time again is that candidates are good at answering theoretical questions but as soon as I ask scenario based questions so many candidates fail at this step because they come to me with all of these multiple choice based exam and certification which is fine as an introduction but unfortunately those certifications don't teach you the skills that we need in the real world. Think of learning cybersecurity like learning to swim. You can't learn to swim just from reading books. You need to actually do the work, you need to do projects and you need to do hands-on laps which will give you the confidence to apply to more jobs and actually be confident in the interview and land your first cybersecurity job. But for those who complain that cybersecurity is not an entry-level job, I made this entire video just to destroy this myth. So have a look at it and I'll see you there.